going to look at uh, adding structure to the silhouette. So the silhouette is a flattened form, right? It has no dimension, it has no mass. It's just basically an ideation tool to help us with our design. And this time around, what I thought we'd do is look at the head of the character. And then in the next video, I'll talk about fleshing out the body and putting everything all together, right? So I have the text description of the character. It was in the previous video here. Uh, I'll just briefly summarize it again. You know, we've already taken into account the fact that, you know, this character is physically tall. He has olive skin, brown hair, blue eyes. He um, is a 24-year-old lab assistant. He is slightly overweight, but in otherwise, otherwise good shape. Uh, he grew up in a working class neighborhood uh, and raised in a series of foster homes. Okay, so that's the description that we have to work with. Now, out of this, it's like, okay, I have to think about, okay, he's British. Um, he's grown up in foster homes. And, you know, I'm not worried about the color of his skin. I'm not worried about colors of anything right now. I'm just worried about just trying to get a descriptor of a, the physical appearance of this character without having to worry about color. Color is a detail that we will tackle in an upcoming video. So I've got the head of this character here. And what I'll do is, uh, let me hide the description real quick. And I will take this head and I will duplicate it. And what I will do is, in addition to duplicating the head, I will go ahead and hit the transform tool. I'm going to hold the shift key down just to get another variation on that head shape and I'll um, take the original head again, duplicate it, and what I'll do is I will squash the head a little bit and widen it out, and I'll just do this for starters. I'll have just like three heads that I can go ahead and work from, and within these three heads uh, there's a lot of different permutations and varieties that I can come up with. So one is like more elongated. That might fit his description a little bit more if you're tall. You know, one way to emphasize the height of a character and the tallness of a character is to make the head also long as well. Um, the other two, like this head might be more appropriate for a character that is maybe has a, a wider frame, you know, much more, a much wider frame. But this is a fairly neutral average. It's okay, nothing super great, but, you know, we're not getting much exaggeration there. So as I talk my way through this, I'm kind of leaning more towards this version. And I'll just create a couple of copies over here and I'll center them. I'll group them by hitting Command G and I'll drop the opacity. And the reason why is that I want to use this as a framework or a guide for developing characters. So I have to think about a couple of things. So I know he's a lab assistant. And, you know, one of the things that's not in the description that I have to now creatively come up with is this guy smart? Is he average or is he not so smart? And one way that you can kind of, you know, uh, show intelligence within a character is where you place the eye line. So in this particular case, I'm just going to draw a horizontal line here. And I'm going to take that horizontal line and I'm just going to make a copy of it and move it somewhere in the middle and then make a copy of it and move it somewhere to the bottom. Now, that's the eye line. So as I move the eye line lower and lower on the character's head, what does that signify about the character's intelligence? Well, the lower the head, the longer the forehead and the bigger the brain bucket. So if you lower the eye line, you make the character way more smart. This is kind of average, like I've got the eye line roughly where it probably normally would be, but it may not make for an interesting design. We don't know yet. And I've got another version here where the eye line is, you know, a little bit higher. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just exaggerate that a little bit. I'll move the eye line all the way up to the top. All right. So now that I have that in place, let's see what happens if I were just map a set of eyes. Now, eyes come in all shapes and forms. You know, you know, this is part of what I want you to think about as you're exploring this. But I'm just going to have the eyes uh, kind of do something like this. And I'm putting them on its own layer. All right, so just taking those eyes by themselves. 
what would those eyes look like in these different positions? Well, I can duplicate that copy. I can move it down, duplicate it, move it down. And now I'm getting some very interesting variations on this character just with one set of eyes. Now, let's table that for a moment. So that's going to be my first set that I can work with. So uh, I've got this first group. And what I'll do is I'll just experiment with the eyes. So I'm going to group these guys together and just group the whole enchilada. And I'll just shrink this down. And what I'll do is I'll take make a copy of the heads from before, move it over, and let's see what other variations. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just make extra copies. And I'm just focusing on the eyes at this point because I want you to see how much variation there can be. So again, if we have the eye line towards the top, the middle, and you know the bottom. This time what I'm going to focus on, I'll do top, middle, bottom. I'm going to focus on different positions and shapes of the eye. So I can uh, make a new layer. And let's give um, a more uh, rectangular eye shape or something that has a little bit more angles. And let's give him some beady eyes. And, and one of the things about this character here, too, that I think was kind of interesting is that he has a couple of traits here. He is considerate and smart, right? That's something that I got from the, uh, from the physical description of the character. He's considerate and smart, but his negative characteristics are unstable and he's untrustworthy. So he's smart, but he's kind of crafty. So, you know, that's where the eyes can play a really useful role here. It's like instead of giving him these warm puppy dog eyes, I might give him some beady looking eyes, right? Because of that extra trait now. This positive trait is considerate and smart. He, you can be smart, but you could also be very unstable or untrustworthy. So what if I took those eyes and you know played with that? So I can move it down and move it down. And the other thing is the fact that we know that he is intelligent. You know, maybe the eye line lower might be a good call. Let's try another set of eyes. Let's just go in and um, I'll do one of these numbers. I'll bring these eyes in closer this time. Right? So I've got that. Duplicate that. And then duplicate that. Interesting. So there's no right or wrong answers. This is part of the exploration process. This is just seeing various eye shapes and seeing what what it looks like and it could spark a conversation it might be that hey what if I take this eye shape and then move those eyes closer right you want to experiment and try different variations this is you know the exploration part in my humble opinion is the funnest part it's really enjoyable to do this because um, you're kind of looking at all the possibilities so I'm going to just uh, group these eyes, and I'm going to group the upper set of eyes, and I'll just hide them, and I will play with another eye shape. So um, let's move the eyes all the way out, and let's see what that looks like. And I'm, I'm considering the eyes even before I go ahead and play with glasses. So like maybe on this version right here, um, I will go with a um, kind of like a spaced out set of eyes, just like. And why am I kind of zoning in on this kind of shape of the eye? Well, because he's untrustworthy, right? And so you don't really see much of their eyes. They're kind of shifty. So that could 
be a potential contender as well. Um, because I want people to be able to pick that characteristic up when they're looking at this character. They should be able to look at this guy and get a sense that, mm, you know, he looks kind of smart, but something about him suggests that he's a little bit, um, you know, uh, more uh, selfish, right? Or someone who is uh, unstable. Now, unstable and untrustworthy, it's like, uh, let's just try another set here. I'm going to just go with like kind of like the eyes opened like this. And kind of give them a little bit more of that, you know, where you have like that really prominent pupil. I don't want to make him look psycho. But I want to make him look like, okay, there's something that's just a little bit weird. So I, that's why I have the eyelids in there. And so now I'll just move that over and move that down. And I can just see the possibilities. I can see if that works. So let's assume for the sake of argument that, you know, maybe, maybe we kind of like this version of the character. So we can, you know, we're again trying to answer, you know, the question, which is, is this design going to be effective for the story that's being told. Every decision that I make is kind of keeping that in consideration. Now from there, what I can do is I can play with the position of the nose. So let me just go off to the side here and make some notes here. So we have our eye line here. So we have eyes. And then I'm going to make another line here, which is going to be the nose. And I'll make another line here, which is going to be the mouth. Right? Now, the way they're all positioned, they're very, very equally distant from one another, right? And if we put just some generic eyes, a generic nose, and, you know, a generic mouth, there's nothing super exciting or crazy about that. But what if we took um, these three objects here, and uh, I'll just duplicate this. I'll take the eye line here. I'll take the nose line, I move the eyes closer to the nose, and I will move the mouth further down. So w when we do this, we're actually getting something that doesn't look like a ladder, right? It looks kind of more, uh, you know, exaggerated. It has a little bit more uh, cartooniness. So if I were to just take those same eyes and that same nose and that same mouth, you can see that this kind of infer something about the personality of the character. So that's another really cool thing to go ahead and play with. Like, if this is our character here, you know, it's like you can see that there's a little bit more of an assumption of personality just by varying the position of the eyes, nose, and mouth. And that, that could also mean that you have the eyes and the nose much further away and the mouth really close, right? So you get characters that look something like this. You know, the sky's the limit. You have so many different options here that you can choose from. So, you know, don't be afraid to really, you know, go out there, you know. And noses have various shapes too. Yeah, um, you know, I think what I'm going to do for this particular uh, exercise is I'm just going to have the nose look something like that. And then I will put the lips. kind of give him some very interesting teeth. You know, the, the thing that I look at when I look at people is I look at their teeth. Uh, after I look at their eyes, of course, I look at the teeth just because the teeth have so such interesting, they're interesting shapes. They're very, very cool to look at. And what I can do now is I can look. I can play with the idea of moving that nose up, right? Or I can move that nose down. You know, I have so many different variations that I can choose from. So this is one of the areas that I would say that if you have the ability to do this digitally, it's a, it's a pretty nice thing. You have this flexibility that, um, that affords you the ability to kind of like experiment. And uh, so let me just go ahead and say, all right, well, here's the head, you know, um, I can then kind of just see what the, the body or the, the actual head looks like.
you know, and I can start to flesh out the other components. So playing with that, uh, the eye line, the nose line, and the mouth line are really, really important. Um, so, you know, maybe the other thing too is if he's got a, if he's smart, I don't really know, like there's, um, you know, maybe his mouth is actually really wide too. So I can play with this idea that You know, we have, you know, one tooth that's a little bit crooked. You know, so I'm just experimenting. I'm trying out these different things. I haven't even thought about, like, facial hair and all that stuff. I'm just looking at the shape of the eyes, nose, and mouth. What if I extend that nose, you know, change the shape of the nose? And I might go for, since he's kind of like, he's friendly but not trustworthy, I might go for some sharper features. Just thinking out aloud, it's like using those angular features to just imminent danger, right? Um, so let's go in, and I want to take care of those eyes. Let's just um, take the eyes out, and let's go ahead and give him those, like, shifty eyes. And then we can give some bags. And then maybe those eyebrows might be. So now we have something that, we have a character that has a hint of a personality. Something about the character makes him interesting. And, you know, we haven't even talked about hairstyles yet either. He's got kind of a disheveled look, but I don't have to necessarily match that silhouette, you know. Um, I can I can think about what are what some other options could be maybe maybe the hair you know there there's I have to think about first of all is there a part in the hair and I like to look at hairstyles and things of that nature let's just assume for the sake of argument that he has a parting over here well I can look at the shape of the hair and I can just really make that hair kind of really prominent And, you know, that's not the only solution here. That's like one variation of this guy. I'll move him out to the side. And uh, what if I took the same head now? I'll just duplicate this. Command J is your friend. You need to know that one. All right, so uh, what if I just angled his jaw out a little bit more? I guess he's kind of looking very Joker-ish, um, which is, you know, something that I don't want to necessarily have, but uh, just kind of like playing with that. Uh, what if I were to play with the idea that his hair is much more unkempt? So now I've got two different versions of his hair. I've got, you know, one that's a little bit more naturally groomed. I'll just move this out here. And I've got one that's a little bit more wild, right? And then I can just draw his ears. You know, then I can throw some glasses. There's different types of glasses that are out there too. So. You could have like the glasses that are kind of like the linen glasses kind of thing, right? Usually those are the glasses that I think a lot of young folks can wear. It's like you have to think about like what kind of accessories does this person wear? Do they wear glasses that are kind of like the John Lennon type glasses? Or do they wear glasses that are a little bit more hip? Now if you think about this guy, he's coming from like a working class background, so maybe his glasses are gonna be just like those you know, maybe they weren't, they're not going to be super fancy. Maybe the glasses are just kind of like the steel rimmed or the, um, you know, like super blocky. Like all of these things you have to consider. You're kind of making this character come to life, right? And then how you wear your glasses. Do you wear your glasses up above? Do you wear them lower? It's like you can really play with that variation too. So... I know this video ran a little bit long, but the idea here is that 
this is the part of the experimentation process. You really want to look at all the possibilities. Don't just settle for the first design that you come up with. Experiment. Play around with it. Have some fun with it. And you'll be surprised. You'll end up creating characters that you never thought you could create. And I think that's the, that's the part that makes it really exciting for me. It's like this process is always an exploration. And I never know, like you know where it's gonna end up so I end up coming up with a character that looks pretty cool that I like and you know it's the start of something interesting so thank you so much for watching this and I will see you in the next video and as always leave me some comments and let me know what you think was it helpful what questions do you have thanks so much for watching